Hi, my name is Dong Eun Lee. I'm from Texas A&M University of Commerce. And then this work is uh, with uh, um, other co-authors. And then, um, you know, what's funny here is that, you know, I didn't actually include the first author's affiliation. You know what? Because um, he works at SK Hynix, but the, this work was actually not supported by his company. So he actually spent his personal time to work on this as a, purely as his research interest. So yeah, some funny story here. Okay, believe it or not, lunch times remain an important problem still today and um, because um, the performance of flash storage does not always come up to uh, expectations. For example, the use of cheap QLC SSDs extends the length time, lunch time significantly compared to TLC SSDs, as you can see in these you know, four different examples. Uh, another factor is that there's some other cost-effective architecture, in other words, cheap architecture such as the DRAM-less SSDs exhibit slow uh, access performance. And then um, sad news is that application launches, launches themselves uh, can rarely exploit this hardware level of parallelism. As you can see, in this bottom figure, we measured Java Eclipse IDs uh, some activation graph during this uh, during the launch cycle, you can see how many CPU cores are activated at the top, and then uh, if SSD is kind of working hard or not in the bottom. So what we want to see here is that we basically want to have many CPU cores and SSD running simultaneously. Unfortunately, it's not the case shown here. Plus, the average Q depth of SSD here is only 0.3. And then we want to make its QDAPs as large as possible. That way we can make our SSD work harder rather than you know, being idle. There have been lots of work in the past to accelerate application launch. And the techniques that are close to our proposed method are shown on the right panel. Their window prefetcher and GSOC prefetch are solid prefetching techniques tailored for hard disk drives. Whereas FAST, which was proposed in this conference, FAST 2011, is a threaded prefetching technique designed for SSD. Our new proposed techniques resolves all the limitations found in a previous FAST paper. Let's talk about some launch scenarios. I'm, I'm pretty sure you are all familiar with this concept, but the launch times depend on the previous state of the system, especially the disk cache. A cold start occurs when the disk cache contains none of the data required by the application. As a special case, a system cold start occurs when there is no user launch data at all. On the other hand, a warm start occurs when the disk cache contains all the requested data during the launch of an app. And our goal is to make the application prefetcher approach the performance of the warm start as much as possible. Our technique is named the parafetch, and as an application prefetcher, our goal is to expedite an application launch by hiding disk IO latencies. And if you look at those two bottom figures, uh, we show cold start scenarios with and without prefetch techniques. Those blue blocks uh, denote disk access, yellow blocks denote CPU computations. And the strategy of prefetching techniques should differ between hard disk drives and SSDs. This is because for hard disk drives, physical disk head movement is an important factor. Whereas on SSDs, exploiting the internal parallelism of an SSD and utilizing multiple CPU cores are more important. To reduce launch times on SSDs, uh, threaded prefetching should trace not only IO blocks, but also their access order because there's dependency between disk access and CPU computations. To this end, parafetch consists of two phases. The first phase is the learning phase, where we monitor disk reads and page faults during the first launch of the application. Second phase is called the prefetch phase, where we use stored information to accelerate loading during a subsequent launch of an application. There are three fundamental challenges when one is designing a prefetcher. The first one is accurate collection of launch-related disk blocks, because without this information, you know, uh, we cannot do any prefetching. Second one is that once you get this correct launch-related disk blocks, 
How do you lay down in the timeline? How do you pre-schedule these blocks to enhance prefetch throughput? This pre-scheduling can be roughly considered as optimizing the order of launch-related blocks. Now that we have collected accurate blocks and then we also know the optimal, optimal organization of you know, these blocks, our final job is overlapping application execution with the disk prefetching. This slide shows the overall architectural parafetch. Here the learning phase contains accurate tracing and pre-scheduling blocks. And the prefetch phase contains parallelized execution. Notice that the learning phase only occurs once for the very first launch of an application. And from the second launch on, and on, the prefetch phase kicks in. In the learning phase, parafetch invalidates disk cache first to collect launch-related disk blocks. But the disk cache invalidation process provided by Linux is not accurate in general, especially when other applications are running due to shared libraries and so on. So we use more sophisticated techniques to more accurately collect launch blocks. Once we collect the launch-related blocks, then our next job is pre-scheduling to optimize the order of launch-related blocks and enhance pre-patch throughput. To this end, we employ two techniques called range merge and metadata shift. After pre-scheduling is done, Parafetch creates an application name.pf file whose example is shown on the right side. Uh, That's a pretty much famous uh, Linux application, GIMP. This file gives the optimized sequence of launch-related disk blocks. And finally, once this information is actually stored in PF file, in the pre-patch phase, Parapatch performs threaded prefetching according to the launch sequence given in the PF file. During this phase, we can do some fine-tuning of range merge and metadata shift, uh, and the PF file is updated accordingly as we do some adjustment. Let's first look at our first component block, which is accurate tracing. Accurate tracing is essential for better launch performance. But unfortunately, this cache invalidation by Linux is not perfect. There might be two reasons behind. The first one is a page cache, page is in dirty on the right back, mapped into page table states. These are not really invalidated. Second reason is the slab objects for caching metadata with reference count greater than zero are not invalidated either. So for solutions to these problems, uh, we uh, suggest these three solutions. First, we synchronize before IO tracing to flush dirty and underwrite back blocks. Second, we do page port monitoring to detect missing page cache blocks for regular files. These two solutions actually solved in the first issue. The second issue, when slab object so reference count is greater than zero, how do you solve that? Uh, we find actually missing metadata blocks, and we perform a file system level dependency check to identify launch-related metadata blocks. They have not been traced, but have dependency on traced data blocks. And I'm going to show you how we do that in the next slide. To find missing data blocks, we created ext4 fiadap function based on ext4 fiamap function of Linux kernel. Uh, basically, ext4 fiamap function is used to get file extent mappings, and then it naturally accesses uh, associated uh, metadata blocks, as you can see in this uh, figure. But unlike ext4 fiamap, uh, ext4 fiadap returns not only file extent mappings, but also their associated metadata blocks. And this function is called for each log entry of for, uh, regular files. Now I want to show you the comparison of pair patch and then FAST 2011 <laughs> technique launch times on a laptop. Uh, since FAST 2011, well at the time, well ex ext3 file system is pretty common, so it is basically designed for ext3. So we modified the pair patch, which is basically designed for ext4 file system uh, for this comparison. Um, on a system called the start, system called the start, when there's no app running behind in background, parafetch outperforms fast by 11% on average. 
But when other applications are running, which is more interesting case and which is more common case in our everyday uh, computing scenario, Fast performs even worse since its tracing capability is severely hindered by other applications. In the figure shown here, you can find how many blocks Fast is missing when LibreOffice Writer is running in the background when compared to the system cold start scenario. And this contributes a lot to the degrad degradation of a previous FAST approach. As a result, Parapatch performs a lot better than FAST does in this particular scenario when some app is running behind. This table shows the results from various applications on three different platforms. For the first two columns, we show how many read requests are traced by Parapatch. For the third column, which is actually, you know, uh, this is shown in the, the red box. It shows um, how many uh, missing metadata blocks are detected by Parafetch using missing metadata detection techniques I, I explained a little bit earlier. Despite all of these efforts, uh, Parafetch still misses a few IO blocks, including you know, metadata access and file access blocks. The reason behind we are missing some build blocks is that because um, these apps are not uh, always the same. Sometimes they access you know, different, uh, uh, different regions in the file system, so that's why uh, we still miss a few. Now let's move on to our second block of uh, pre-scheduling. Again, the role of prefetching is to enhance prefetch throughput by organizing launch-related blocks. As you can see in the figure, an SSD consists of multiple flash chips inside. And we want to take advantage of its internal parallelism to accelerate prefetching. Here we suggest two solutions. First one is metadata shifting to put many comments into the command queue of SSD. Second one is range merging to increase the IO size. If you look at the uh, diagram shown on the right, uh, if you start from the middle, we have a four kilobytes of block and then when queue depth is one, we have that much throughput. If you do metadata shifting to put many, many uh, uh, commands in the command queue of SSD, like you know, 32 queue depths, then you can increase throughput that much, like nine times. If you do range merging to consolidate different blocks, merge different blocks into one to increase the size, when queue depth is still one, we, still get, we also get another uh, performance improvement. Now comes metadata shifting. Uh, this is our first technique uh, in pre-scheduling. Basically, any prefetch technique utilize asynchronous functions. But despite asynchronous functions, some prefetching should be synchronous and serialized. If you look at the figure on the left, there is a prefetch dependency between metadata IO and file data IO. In order to access blue blocks, we need to access the first yellow block. What happens in this case is, while we are waiting for the yellow block to be processed, our SSD's command queue becomes empty. As a result, our SSD doesn't work hard here. It's just chilling. So our solution here is to find nearby metadata blocks and plug them in between the yellow and the blue block. This is possible because there's no uh, prefetching level dependencies among buffer cached blocks. That way, we can increase the queue depth of SSD and keep our SSD busy all the time. We have a parameter called the shift size to control the size of metadata blocks to be left shifted. And as we can see in the bottom graphs, as we have larger shift size, which corresponds to the more metadata blocks before file data IO blocks, we see reduction in the prefetch time. As a second technique, we use range merging to merge IO requests nearby into a large one and improve IO throughput. We have a parameter called IO distance threshold to determine the nearness of blocks in terms of sequence number. So when the distance threshold is three, we consider three blocks that appear later than a given block. And when one of them can be merged with the given block, we merge them and make it into a single block. As an example, if you see the figure shown here, the first blue block uh, and the second block is within the IO distance threshold of three, and then they have the same IO number. If we further look at the starting block number and the prepatch size, we know that we can merge those two blocks you know, to a single block. Range merging is also effective in reducing the prepatch time, as shown in the graphs at the bottom. 
As we consider more candidate blocks by increasing the threshold, then there's a higher chance to merge different blocks. Now, finally, let's look at our last component of a uh, uh, parafetch. The parallel utilization of CPU and SSD is a key to the reduction of application launch time. And we have seen in the previous slides that metadata shifting and range merging can reduce the prefetching time. However, if we increase the metadata shift size or the I.O. distance threshold too much, it can negatively impact launch time. This phenomenon can be observed from the figure shown here, and there are two reasons behind this. The first reason is that it's actually beyond our control, but the SSD level controller, SSD controller actually reorders, reorganizes I.O. Um, in its command queue. And then there could be also I.O. contentions between the prefetch thread and launching app. So in order to um, resolve this problem, a parafetch actually gradually increases the level of optimization only when if the prefetching is not effective. Uh, we call this technique dynamic scheduling. And here we show evaluation results on laptop PC and Raspberry Pi. You can find Google Pixel smartphones results in our paper. Here we perform the ablation study and show parapetrous performance breakdown. As shown in the figures, as we add more features from accurate tracing and pre-scheduling, we see better results. Also, dynamic scheduling gradually fine-tunes the level of optimization after the first learning phase and shows better results than the initial pre-scheduling optimization. But if you look at these uh, results closely, uh, we have uh, red boxes. These red boxes is where we see a dramatic difference between cold start and warm start. In other words, these applications are I.O. bound, I.O. intensive jobs. So in that case, uh, parapatch's performance is not really close to a warm start, but we still see significant reduction in lunch time. So we are happy. And the blue boxes, these are, if you look at these blue boxes, these are applications where cold start and warm start times are not really uh, too much different. In that case, uh, parapatch is a very close to warm start scenario. Overall, in the laptop, parapatch is 54%, warm start is 51%. So there's only 3% difference. To summarize, uh, there are three fundamental challenges in threaded prefetching method, which was uh, accurate tracing, pre-scheduling, and overlapping application execution with disk prefetching. We proposed parafetch, and we implemented and evaluated it. It shows negligible overhead in terms of CPU, memory, and storage, and uh, its launch performance is close to the warm start scenario in most cases. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll take a couple of questions. Thank you.